Welcome to the World Summit on the Information Society 2016 in Geneva, Switzerland. And I'm delighted to be joined by Thomas Lamanauskas, Group Director, Public Policy at Vimpelcom, a representative of Mobile Telecom's operator. So my first question to you is really, how can the private sector contribute to sustainable development? Thank you very much, Claire. And indeed, as an international communications and technology company, we play our role in bringing digital opportunities to our 220 million users uh, across our 14 markets, from Algeria in the, in the West to Laos in the East. And uh, we do that in a, in a number of ways, but we see our main role to be a key element of the social and economic development of uh, our communities we operate in. And we do that through providing quality services, through leveraging our applications to advance sustainable development, and as well as through behaving as a, a responsible corporate citizen. When you say that you're leveraging applications, these are e-medicine, e-education, those sort of applications? That sort of applications, because as we, uh, as we all know, it's not about connectivity anymore. It's not about just calls and texts. Yeah? So you know, users no longer use phone just to call someone. They use that to find news, to manage their finances, to manage their healthcare, to access education, to access jobs. And we as the company are responsive and actually trying to lead that. So we are transforming from traditional telecommunications operator, which used to be network centric, to consumer centric provider of the digital services and digital opportunities. So for example, mobile finance. Yeah? So we now serve around 30 million users across our footprint. And in our footprint, it's also important to know, it's still around 465 million users uh, outside of uh, formal financial system. We do, sorry. Uh, no, indeed, banking the unbanked. It's a very, very mm -hmm. uh, in, in, important uh, mm -hmm. a development for, yes, social mm -hmm. in, in inclusion. I, I was wondering, you were at the high policy meeting mm -hmm. on bridging the digital mm -hmm. divide because of course the issue is that there are so many people who are not actually reaping mm -hmm. the the benefits mm -hmm. and of course and first of all so mobile financial services is one way to reach them and one way to address their to bring those opportunities but of course connectivity is still an issue you know so connectivity is still a backbone of that and we believe that mobile financial mobile services as such before mobile financial services is the key way to reach people in you know, a wireless technologies can reach bigger populations we, our operations cover around 10% of the world. So in that 10% of the world, more than 100% or, of people, so that's penetration, or more than 100% uh, is, is in mobile services. However, it doesn't fully translate yet into the access to the internet. In our markets, still, uh, two-thirds of the people don't have access to the internet. It's 10% more than the global average. So there's still a lot to do in that regard, and that's why we continue investing in our mobile networks, including rollout of the 4G technologies, so that it's uh, networks reach everyone, quality networks, fast and sp fast internet, but then it's a platform for all these applications that users uh, can receive. Because indeed, you're trying to put people at the heart of the debate, so they're not just beneficiaries. It's all about consumer-centric approach and user being in the center of that and person as an empowered person who is able to get benefits of digital opportunities. So one way is, of course, by providing services, but in a way, by encouraging those communities and those people to be empowered part of that, as we say that, say there. And that's where comes our, what we call corporate citizenship part, yeah? because we believe that we'll be successful if the communities that we operate in are successful, and if the people can get uh, better salaries, more economic opportunities, better education, better health. In that regard, we also empower them through such our programs like Make Your Mark program, which tries to encourage startups and young entrepreneurs and also access to education. In this regard, we launched last year Eurasia Mobile Challenge competition in our seven markets, specifically to encourage startups and digital entrepreneurs in, in those markets. We support national programs, for example, in Algeria startup competitions, but also national digital ecosystem uh, assessments, as we do uh, in quite a few countries in Eastern Europe and Central Asia as well. Thomas Lamanauskas, Group Director for Public Policy at Vimpelcom, thank you very much for joining us Thanks this a lot. morning. Thank you. And do join us on the ITU YouTube channel where we'll be hearing from experts from the business sector, private sector, public sector on how information and communication technology is benefiting people around the world.